What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is William Sharp, and today I will be presenting on the Davis Bessie power plants. Let's make it happen. Here we go. All right. So, critiquing an SIA process. The title, official title, is a generic environmental impact assessment statement for license renewal of nuclear plants, supplement 52, regarding davis Bessey Nuclear Power Station. This aerial photograph kind of gives you um, sort of the picture of what we're working with, so size and scale. To begin with the background, um, the environmental impact assessment statement that will be analyzed was conducted for the davis Bessey Nuclear Power Station, uh, Unit 1, for a renewed operating license to extend its life for an additional 20 years. The license for the power station had been planned to expire in 2017, and this analysis evaluates the impacts of the proposed action, uh, alternatives to the proposed action, which include um, coal-fired power plant, combination of alternatives such as wind and solar and compressed air, as well as a no action alternative. The official governing body is the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, during the scoping process, there was no federal, state or local agencies um, other than the NRC that were identified. Here's um, an image by Jeff gay dash of the power plant, the stunning image here. So a bit of background of the plant. Um, it was issued an operational license, April 22nd, 1977. Uh, it's a pressurized water reactor. Um, the Atomic Energy Act of 1954 specified that these commercial power reactors can be granted 40 years uh, with an option to renew. Um, so the decision to seek a renewal license uh, rests with the facility owners and is normally based upon the uh, viability and investment. Um, so that kind of sets the stage for what we're working with right now. Um, First Energy, Energy Nuclear Operating Company submitted this application to renew um, the power station. Uh, there are three transmission lines that are important, uh, the Bay Shore, Le Monet, and the Beaver line. So as I said before, it was performed due to the um, expiring lifespan. Um, so they want to expand the license for an additional 20 years. Location. We looked at this earlier a little bit, but um, specifically it's located in Oak Harbor, which is in Carroll Township. Ottawa County, Ohio, approximately 20 mi 21 miles um, east of Toledo, Ohio. And the station is located in Northwest Ohio within the Great Lakes Basin, uh, right on Lake Erie. So here we have uh, the power plant and a wildlife refuge right here, actually, um, right next to it. Pretty interesting. Port Clinton is the closest town. So that figure is from the report, actually. Another uh, really striking image here on the shore of Lake Erie. Um, and this kind of is a more broad scope, uh, pulling out a little bit, looking at nuclear facilities in the Great Lakes region as a whole. Um, so we see here the Davis Bessie on Lake Erie, up in Perry, quite a few on Lake Ontario, here along Lake Michigan, uh, Big Rock Point, right before you get to Mackinac City, uh, near Charlevoix. Costs and controversy. So I'm really digging into the meat of it here. Um, the station cost $2.7 billion. $2019. Uh, there has been a $5 million fine for First Energy, uh, which for suspected actions that led to corrosion. 
Uh, and the company also had to pay an additional 28 million in fines under a settlement with the US Department of Justice. And then currently the system we're living under is House Bill 6, which is signed into law um, just last year, which uh, subsidize residents utilities by 150 million per year to keep it operational. So very interesting bill. Overall findings from SIA and my analysis. Uh, so they looked at potential impacts to minority, migrant, and indigenous peoples, as well as low-income populations, analyzed within a 50-mile radius. The assessment also analyzed land use chains, transportation shifts, population-related impacts, tax revenue, altercations to historic and archaeological resources, which I thought was uh, solid. The findings state that most impacts would be would consist of socioeconomic and radiological effects. Um, the analysis further states that socioeconomic impacts were found to be small. Uh, when running a cost benefit analysis, they concluded that the costs would be of running a severe accident mitigation alternative would be higher than associated benefits. So that, that um, test was never run. Data collection and methodology. Um, so to verify this information, the um, NRC staff conducted a site audit uh, so they met with plant personnel, reviewed documentation toward the facility, met with federal, state, and local agencies. Uh, following their scoping period and site audit, the NRC staff compiled all of its findings. Um, and then we have um, a ruling of 78 environmental impacts issued. Um, and so looking at the uh, significance that they use, they use the uh, environmental quality terminology, um, small, which is not detectable, moderate, uh, which is effects um, alter noticeably, but don't de destabilize, and then large, which is uh, destabilization to important attributes of resources. Uh, talking a bit about public involvement. So to begin the process, they had two public scoping meetings in Port Clinton, Ohio. Comments received during the process were published separately. Comments considered had some impact on future assessors, but seems limited. Uh, the initial draft was available for public comment for 45 days. Um, in my analysis, I'd say that the assessment puts little emphasis on the impact into community, pointing me to believe that public involvement in scoping was uh, low and limited because alternatives um, to the power plant were dismissed. The public involvement and positive alternative outcomes never really uh, likely at all from the start. That was a lovely photo here, John Zedick, the power plant. Mitigation analysis. So mitigation alternatives by the report are as follows. Uh, a decommissioning, natural gas, uh, com combination alternative, coal-fired coal alternative. Uh, the assessment stated that the alternatives were considered but dismissed and that these alternatives would not be able to supply the replacement power needed. So the combined conclusion to mitigate process was that the impacts of renewal would be smaller than those of feasible and commercially viable alternatives. So um, what we have here is um, money, um, tax, tax subsidies being, being put on the back, backs of Ohioans um, with First Energy. Um, but of course, this SIA was performed before House Bill 6. So. Another image here um, that I actually made of the uh, of some smokestacks in Ohio. So, um, in conclusion, let's wrap it up here. Um, so, due to the reasons listed in the above analysis, I scored this assessment as a B. Um, the quality, preparedness, and professionalism was high. Um, the team of assessors were well resourced, educated, and positioned. Uh, there was. 25 total assessors uh, with varying skills and talents and uh, knowledge. Um, the environmental impacts um, that I saw were clearly favored and emphasized over social impacts. Um, so that's reasoning for my score. I was also impressed with the length to which the assessors went. Um, some of my looming questions are how this assessment would change after the events that took place, the passing of House, House Bill 6. And then I have some um, some of my resources there. So, yeah, if um, if anyone would like to read more, um, I will be listing both this ArcGIS story map, which is a great resource, 
um, below, and as well as my final written report, um, the um, NRC's uh, SIA, and um, some Google Earth maps, and um, some other photography of American power uh, generators that I find very compelling and striking. So yeah, thanks for watching. And I look forward to hearing your guys' response and as well as uh, reading about all of your projects. Take care.